We have prepared for you 100 more real estate questions that will help you study and prepare for your real estate exam. Please like this video as it helps our channel. Now let's get started. Question one. When a deed does not specify the estate being conveyed, it is presumed to transfer which of the following? A. Fee simple absolute. B. Life estate. C. Leasehold estate. D. Future interest. The correct answer is A. Fee simple absolute. When a deed does not specify the estate being conveyed, it is generally presumed to transfer a fee simple absolute, which is the highest and most complete form of ownership. Question 2. Possession, control, and enjoyment are included in which of the following? A. Eminent domain. B. Leasehold estate. C. Bundle of rights. D. Reversionary interest. The correct answer is C. Bundle of rights. The bundle of rights in real estate includes possession, control, and enjoyment among other rights, allowing the property owner to exercise various freedoms and powers. Question 3. If Alicia deeds property to Bernice and her heirs, with the stipulation that if Bernice leaves no heirs, the property will then go to Cynthia, then Cynthia now holds which type of estate? A. Fee simple absolute. B. Life estate. C. Leasehold estate. D. Remainder estate. The correct answer is D. Remainder estate. Cynthia holds a remainder estate, which means she has a future interest in the property that will take effect after the termination of the preceding interest, in this case, Bernice's heirs. Question 4. In a deed that states, to Jonathan for his life, what type of interest does the grantor have? A. Fee simple absolute. B. Life estate. C. Leasehold estate. D. Reversionary interest. The correct answer is D. Reversionary interest. The grantor retains a reversionary interest in the property. Once Jonathan's life estate ends, ownership reverts back to the grantor or their designated party. Question 5. A life estate may be granted for which of the following purposes? A personal residence, B, business operations, C, investment purposes, D, all of the above. The correct answer is D, all of the above. A life estate can be granted for various purposes, including personal residence, business operations, or investment reasons, providing the life tenant with the right to use and enjoy the property during their lifetime. Question 6. Which of the following is not a type of freehold estate? A. Fee simple absolute. B. Life estate. C. Leasehold estate. D. Qualified fee estate. The correct answer is C. Leasehold estate. A leasehold estate is a type of non-freehold estate that grants the right to possess and use property for a specific period but does not convey ownership. Question 7. Fee simple ownership includes all of the following rights, except A. Right to sell the property. B. Right to lease the property. C. Right to use the property. D. Right to transfer ownership after death. The correct answer is D. Right to transfer ownership after death. Fee simple ownership grants the owner the right to sell, lease, and use the property but the transfer of ownership after death may be subject to estate planning or inheritance laws. Question 8. In a scenario where an elderly couple grants a hospital a gift of real property while reserving a life estate for themselves, the hospital is considered the A. Life tenant B. Remainder man C. Grantor D. Grantee The correct answer is D. Grantee the hospital is the grantee in this scenario, as they receive the gift of real property from the elderly couple while the couple retains a life estate. Question 9. Which of the following activities is not permitted for the owner of a life estate? A. Selling the life estate interest. B. Transferring the life estate to another person. C. Renting the property to a tenant. D. Making structural changes to the property. The correct answer is 
A. Selling the life estate interest. The owner of a life estate can transfer or convey the life estate to another person, rent the property, and make certain changes or improvements, but they cannot sell the life estate interest itself. Question 10. A widow who is given the right to use the family home for her lifetime, with ownership passing to the children upon her death, holds which type of interest? A. Fee simple absolute. B. Life estate. C. Leasehold estate. D. Conditional estate. The correct answer is B. Life estate. A life estate grants the widow the right to use and occupy the family home during her lifetime, but ownership passes to the children upon her death. Question 11. Which of the following statements is true regarding a life estate? A. It can only be created for a specific number of years. B. The life tenant has full ownership rights to the property. C. The life tenant is responsible for paying property taxes and maintenance. D. It terminates upon the death of the grantor. The correct answer is C. The life tenant is responsible for paying property taxes and maintenance. In a life estate, the life tenant has the right to use and possess the property during their lifetime, but is typically responsible for the property's expenses, such as taxes and maintenance. Question 12. What term is used to describe the degree, quantity, or nature of a person's interest in real property? A. Ownership type. B. Estate size. C. Property valuation. D. Interest in land. The correct answer is D. Interest in land. Interest in land refers to the degree, quantity, or nature of a person's legal right or claim to real property, which can vary in terms of ownership and duration. Question 13. The return of land to the grantor or grantor's heirs when the grant is over is best described as A. Eshit. B. Reversion. C. Eminent domain. D. Condemnation. The correct answer is B. Reversion. Reversion refers to the return of land to the grantor or the grantor's heirs after the expiration of a specific interest or estate in the property, such as a life estate. Question 14. How should an estate in land vested in a grantee until she marries be properly classified? A. Fee simple, absolute. B. Life estate. C. Fee simple determinable. D. Leasehold estate. The correct answer is C. Fee simple determinable. An estate in land vested in a grantee until she marries is classified as a fee simple determinable because it automatically ends upon the occurrence of a specific event or condition, marriage in this case. Question 15. Which of the following is an example of a less than freehold estate? A. Fee simple absolute. B. Life estate. C. Leasehold estate. D. Fee simple determinable. The correct answer is C. Leasehold estate. A leasehold estate is an example of a less than freehold estate because it grants the tenant the right to possess and use the property for a specified period, but does not convey ownership. Question 16. With respect to real property, how is the term estate best described? A. The physical land and structures on it. B. The legal interest or rights a person has in real property. C. The value or worth of a property. D. The process of transferring property ownership. The correct answer is B. The legal interest or rights a person has in real property. In the context of real property, the term estate refers to the legal interest, rights, or bundle of ownership rights that a person holds in the property. Question 17. Which statement provides the strongest assurance of fee simple ownership? A. Subject to a mortgage. B. Subject to an easement. C. Subject to zoning restrictions. D. To have and to hold forever. The correct answer is D. To have and to hold forever. The statement, to have and to hold forever, indicates fee simple ownership, which is the highest and most complete form of property ownership, granting full rights and control 
without any limitations or conditions. Question 18. In the administration of an estate, who typically selects the administrator? A. The court. B. The deceased person's attorney. C. The family members of the deceased. D. The executor named in the deceased person's will. The correct answer is A. The court. In the administration of an estate, the court typically selects the administrator, also known as the executor or personal representative, to manage and distribute the deceased person's assets and handle other legal matters. Question 19. Which of the following characteristics does not describe a fee simple estate? A. Absolute ownership. B. Potentially infinite duration. C. Subject to certain restrictions or conditions. D. Transferred upon the death of the owner. The correct answer is D. Transferred upon the death of the owner. A fee simple estate is not transferred upon the death of the owner. It provides absolute ownership, potentially infinite duration, and may be subject to restrictions or conditions, but it does not automatically transfer upon the owner's death. Question 20. When a man dies without leaving a valid will, his death is referred to as what? A. Intestate. B. Testate. C. Probate. D. Trustee. The correct answer is A. Intestate. When a person dies without leaving a valid will, they are said to have died intestate. This means that the distribution of their estate will be determined by the laws of intestacy. Question 21. A woman possesses a fee simple estate. Which of the following actions can she not do to the property? A. Sell or transfer the property to someone else. B. Lease the property to a tenant. C. Modify or alter the property. D. Use the property for any lawful purpose. The correct answer is C. Modify or alter the property. As the holder of a fee simple estate, the woman has the right to sell, lease, and use the property for any lawful purpose. However, significant modifications or alterations to the property may require additional permissions or approvals. Question 22. A farmer sold a portion of his farm to a railroad company with the condition, as long as it remains a rail line. If the rail line is abandoned, the property reverts back to the farmer or the farmer's heirs. What type of estate is described in this scenario? A. Fee simple estate. B. Life estate. C. Leasehold estate. D. Defeasible estate. The correct answer is D. Defeasible estate. The scenario describes a defeasible estate, specifically a fee simple determinable estate. The farmer retains a possibility of reverter, which means that if the specified condition, rail line existence, is violated or abandoned, the property automatically reverts back to the farmer or the farmer's heirs. Question 23. Which term refers to the largest estate or ownership in real property? A. Fee simple estate. B. Life estate. C. Leasehold estate. D. Concurrent estate. The correct answer is A. Fee simple estate. The fee simple estate refers to the largest and most complete form of ownership in real property. It provides the owner with absolute rights and control over the property and can be freely transferred or inherited. Question 24. The holder of which of the following would be considered a non-freeholder? A. Fee simple estate. B. Life estate. C. Leasehold estate. D. Concurrent estate. The correct answer is C. Leasehold estate. A non-freeholder refers to someone who holds a leasehold estate, which is a temporary and non-ownership interest in real property. The leasehold estate grants the holder the right to use and occupy the property for a specified period, but ownership remains with the landlord, freeholder. Question 25. Which of the following actions is not permitted for the grantor of a life estate? A. Sell or transfer the life estate to another person. B. Lease the life estate to a tenant. C. Modify or alter the property. D. 
revoke or terminate the life estate at any time? The correct answer is D. Revoke or terminate the life estate at any time. Once a life estate is created, the grantor, also known as the life tenant, cannot unilaterally revoke or terminate the life estate. The life estate remains in effect until the death of the life tenant or the occurrence of any other specified event mentioned in the deed or will. Question 26. Where would a licensee be advised to go to clarify any questions about an encroachment concerning a property she is selling? A. Local Zoning Department. B. County Recorder's Office. C. Surveyor's Office. D. Title Insurance Company. The correct answer is C. Surveyor's Office. The Surveyor's Office can provide accurate boundary information and identify any potential encroachments on the property in question. Question 27. In a scenario where the owner sold a property with a restriction on selling alcohol, but the subsequent buyer violated the restriction, what would be the basis for the owner or owner's heirs to claim a right of reentry? A. Breach of contract. B. Adverse possession. C. Eminent domain. D. Lis pendens. The correct answer is A. Breach of contract. The violation of the restriction on selling alcohol by the subsequent buyer constitutes a breach of the contract between the owner and the buyer, which may allow the owner or owner's heirs to claim a right of reentry. Question 28. Which of the following items is an example of personal property? A. House. B. Car. C. Land. D. Building fixture. The correct answer is B. Car. A car is typically considered personal property, as it is movable and not permanently attached to land or structures. Question 29. Which of the following is typically categorized as personal property? A. Real estate. B. Furniture. C. Easement. D. Deed. The correct answer is B. Furniture. Furniture is commonly categorized as personal property as it is movable and not considered a part of the real estate or immovable property. Question 30. What is the best definition of real property? A. Land and everything permanently attached to it. B. Personal belongings. C. Intellectual property rights. D. Financial assets. The correct answer is A. Land and everything permanently attached to it. Real property refers to land and any improvements or structures permanently attached to it, such as buildings, trees, and underground resources. Question 31. What category do temporary or easily movable things or objects typically fall under in real estate? A. Fixtures. B. Chattels. C. Improvements. D. Structures. The correct answer is B. Chattels. Temporary or easily movable things or objects in real estate are generally classified as chattels, which are personal property items distinct from fixtures or permanent structures. Question 32. In a real property sale contract that includes removable items like paintings and furniture, what should the seller deliver along with the deed? A. Maintenance records. B. Proof of insurance. C. Appraisal report. D. Removable items mentioned in the contract. The correct answer is D. Removable items mentioned in the contract. In addition to delivering the deed, the seller should also provide the removable items specifically mentioned in the real property sale contract, such as paintings and furniture. Question 33. Among the following options, which one is not considered a fixture in real estate? A. Ceiling fan. B. Built-in bookshelf. C. Exterior fence. D. Freestanding microwave. The correct answer is D. Freestanding microwave. A freestanding microwave is not considered a fixture in real estate since it can be easily moved and is not permanently affixed to the property. Question 34. When determining whether something is a fixture, what is the most significant factor to consider? A. Size. B. Age. C. Market value. D. Method of attachment. The correct answer is 
D. Method of attachment. The most significant factor in determining whether something is a fixture is the method of attachment, that is, how the item is affixed or attached to the property. Question 35. What is an adjustable rate mortgage that allows the borrower to change the arm to a fixed rate mortgage within a specific time? A. An exchangeable arm. B. A convertible arm. C. A balloon. Arm. D. An arm interchange. The correct answer is B. A convertible arm. A convertible arm allows the borrower to change from an adjustable rate mortgage to a fixed rate mortgage within a specified amount of time. Question 36. Which term most accurately describes personal property? A. Real estate. B. Fixtures. C. Chattels. D. Easements. The correct answer is C. Chattels. Chattels is the term that best describes personal property, which includes movable possessions that are not considered part of the real estate. Question 37. Literal property is situated on which type of location? A. Coastline. B. Mountainous region. C. Urban area. D. Rural farmland. The correct answer is A. Coastline. Literal property refers to property that is located along a coastline, typically associated with bodies of water such as oceans, seas, or lakes. Question 38. In the context of real estate, the term improvements is most closely associated with what? A. Landscaping features. B. Structural repairs. C. Building upgrades. D. Property taxes. The correct answer is C. Building upgrades. In real estate, the term improvements primarily refers to enhancements or modifications made to a property's buildings or structures. Question 39. What is the term used to describe the rights of ownership that include the right to use, possess, enjoy, and dispose of a property while excluding others without rights from interfering? A. Eminent domain. B. Adverse possession. C. Zoning regulations. D. Bundle of rights. The correct answer is D. Bundle of rights. The bundle of rights refers to the comprehensive set of ownership rights associated with real property, which encompasses various privileges such as use, possession, enjoyment, and disposition. Question 40. What is the term for the appropriation of land by the owner for public use, which is accepted on behalf of the public, such as streets in a platted subdivision? A. Easement. B. Encroachment. C. Dedication. D. Abandonment. The correct answer is C. Dedication. Dedication is the term used to describe the appropriation of land by the owner for public use where the owner transfers the land's control and responsibility to the public. Question 41. When an owner of real property is uncertain about the inclusion of riparian rights, the best way to determine it is by reviewing the A. Deed B. Zoning regulations C. Property tax records D. Building permits The correct answer is A. Deed Reviewing the deed is the most reliable way to determine if riparian rights are included in the ownership of real property. Question 42. How is the boundary of a property altered? A. Zoning changes. B. Eminent domain. C. Land survey. D. Title insurance. The correct answer is C. Land survey. The boundary of a property is altered through a land survey, which accurately identifies and documents the property lines and any changes to them. Question 43. Who is considered a riparian owner? A. Someone who owns land adjacent to a river or stream. B. An owner of commercial real estate. C. A property owner in a suburban area. D. A landlord who rents out properties. The correct answer is... A. Someone who owns land adjacent to a river or stream. A riparian owner is someone who owns land that directly borders or is adjacent to a river or stream, 
granting them certain rights and privileges associated with the water source. Question 44. In a physical sense, what does real estate encompass, excluding what? A. Buildings and structures. B. Land and improvements. C. Natural resources and minerals. D. Personal belongings and chattels. The correct answer is D. Personal belongings and chattels. Real estate encompasses land, buildings, structures, and improvements, but does not include personal belongings and chattels, which are considered separate from the real property. Question 45. What do riparian rights refer to? A. Rights of access to a public park. B. Rights associated with air travel. C. Rights to use and access water from a river or stream. D. Rights to mineral extraction on private property. The correct answer is C. Rights to use and access water from a river or stream. Riparian rights pertain to the legal rights of landowners to utilize and access water from a nearby river or stream that is located on or adjacent to their property. Question 46. What is the term for the removal of land when a stream suddenly changes its channel? A. Erosion. B. Accretion. C. Avulsion. D. Alluvian. The correct answer is C. Avulsion. Avulsion refers to the sudden removal of land when a stream abruptly changes its course, usually caused by a natural event like a flood or earthquake. Question 47. What must a landowner who sells a one-acre farm do? A. Obtain a building permit. B. Update property tax records. C. Prepare an environmental impact report. D. Provide a valid legal description. The correct answer is D. Provide a valid legal description. When selling a one-acre farm, the landowner must accurately provide a valid legal description of the property to ensure clarity and specificity in the transaction. Question 48. When a woman receives a gift of real property through a will, she is referred to as A. Davies B. Beneficiary C. Heir D. Legatee The correct answer is a. DVZ. A woman who receives real property through a will is referred to as a DVZ, as the property is specifically bequeathed to her in the testator's will. Question 49. What is the term used to describe the loss of one's real estate due to the gradual wearing away of soil caused by natural factors? A. Erosion. B. Encroachment. C. Depletion. D. Amortization. The correct answer is... A. Erosion. Erosion is the term used to describe the gradual loss of real estate due to natural causes, such as the wearing away of soil by wind or water. Question 50. An important characteristic of land is its potential for modification and improvement, which typically increases its value. Which of the following options is not considered an improvement? A. Building a swimming pool. B constructing a new garage, C, installing a security system, D, growing natural vegetation. The correct answer is D, growing natural vegetation. While modifications like building structures or adding security systems are considered improvements, growing natural vegetation is not typically categorized as an improvement to the land in real estate terms. Question 51. Which of the following types of property is typically not considered real property? A. Land. B. Buildings. C. Vehicles. D. Mineral rights. The correct answer is C. Vehicles. While land, buildings, and mineral rights are considered real property, vehicles are typically classified as personal property. Question 52. How are riparian rights best described? A. Rights to access public parks. B. Rights associated with air travel. C. Rights to use and access water from a river or stream. D. Rights to subdivide and develop land. The correct answer is C. Rights to use and access water from a river or stream. 
riparian rights refer to the legal rights of landowners to utilize and access water from a nearby river or stream that is located on or adjacent to their property. Question 53. What is the term used to describe a right, privilege, or improvement that is inherent to a property and transfers with its ownership? A. Easement. B. Encumbrance. C. Fixture. D. Appurtenance. The correct answer is D. Appurtenance. An appurtenance is a right, privilege, or improvement that is attached to a property and passes with its ownership, such as an easement or a fixture. Question 54. In the context of real property, what does the term fee signify? A. Ownership interest. B. Rental payment. C. Property tax assessment. D. Mortgage loan amount. The correct answer is A. Ownership interest. In real property, the term fee refers to the ownership interest or absolute ownership rights that an individual holds over a property. Question 55. How would you best describe the rights to the space above the ground within vertical planes? A. Air rights. B. Easement rights. C. Subsurface rights. D. Water rights. The correct answer is A. Air rights. Air rights refer to the rights a property owner has to control and use the space above the ground within vertical planes, typically extending to the airspace above their property. Question 56. What is the term for crops that require annual planting and cultivation on land? A. Perennial crops. B. Annual crops. C. Orchards. D. Vineyards. The correct answer is B. Annual crops. Annual crops are those that need to be planted and cultivated each year as they have a life cycle of one growing season. Question 57. How would you best describe the rights in the land that automatically transfer with the conveyance of the land? A. Appurtenant rights. B. Easement rights. C. Inherent rights. D. Water rights. The correct answer is A. Appurtenant rights. Appurtenant rights are rights that are automatically transferred with the conveyance of land, such as easements or other associated privileges and benefits. Question 58. Among these items, which one is not considered real property when affixed as an appurtenance to land? A. Shed. B. Fence. C. Tree. D. Vehicle. The correct answer is D. Vehicle. While sheds, Fences and trees are typically considered real property when affixed to land. Vehicles are generally classified as personal property. Question 59. A man dies testate, leaving a wife and minor son. He bequeaths all of his property to his son, but the wife claims her elective share under the Uniform Probate Code. How will the man's property be distributed? A. Entirely to the son. B. Partially to the son and partially to the wife. C. Entirely to the wife. D. Based on the court's discretion. The correct answer is B. Partially to the son and partially to the wife. The wife is entitled to claim her elective share, which ensures she receives a portion of the husband's property, while the remaining portion goes to the son, as per the will. Question 60. What is the term used to describe a man who makes a will? A. Testator. B. Beneficiary. C. Executor. D. Legatee. The correct answer is A. Testator. A testator is the term used to describe a person, regardless of gender, who makes a will and specifies the distribution of their assets after their death. Question 61. In a building, what are ceiling tiles that drop into a metal frame considered? A. Fixtures. B personal property. C. Easements. D. Improvements. The correct answer is A. Fixtures. Ceiling tiles that drop into a metal frame are considered fixtures because they are permanently attached to the building and are therefore considered part of the real property. Question 62. What does a devise receive? A. Real property. B. Personal property. 
C. Financial compensation. D. Legal advice. The correct answer is A. Real property. A devise is a person who receives real property through a will or testamentary instrument upon the death of the property owner. Question 63. What is the closest meaning of the term intestate? A. To die without a will. B. To die with multiple wills. C. To die without any heirs. D. To die outside the jurisdiction. The correct answer is A. To die without a will. When a person dies into state, it means they passed away without having made a valid will to specify the distribution of their assets. Question 64. When real property is conveyed by a codicil to a will, how is it conveyed? A. By sale. B. By gift. C. By lease. D. By testamentary disposition. The correct answer is D. By testamentary disposition. Real property conveyed by a codicil to a will is conveyed through a testamentary disposition, which is a provision made in the will to transfer ownership of the property. Question 65. What does the term probate refer to in a legal context? A. Distribution of assets after death. B. Property appraisal process. C. Estate planning services. D. Legal dispute resolution. The correct answer is A. Distribution of assets after death. Probate refers to the legal process of administering and distributing the assets of a deceased person according to their will or the laws of intestacy. Question 66. What is a devise in the context of real estate? A. A legal document that transfers personal property after death. B. The act of leaving property to someone in a will. C. A type of mortgage used for real estate transactions. D. A government program for property tax assessment. The correct answer is B. The act of leaving property to someone in a will. A devise refers to the act of transferring real property to someone through a will, indicating who will inherit the real estate after the owner's death. Question 67. How does the property of a person who dies into state pass? A. It is divided equally among all surviving family members. B. It is sold and the proceeds are distributed among creditors. C. It reverts to the government. D. It is determined by the court based on interstate succession laws. The correct answer is D. It is determined by the court based on interstate succession laws. When a person dies intestate, without a will, the court follows specific laws to determine how the property will be distributed among the surviving family members according to the laws of intestacy. Question 68. In the event of intestate succession where no heirs are found, what is the process by which real property reverts to the government? A. Probate. B. Foreclosure. C. Eminent domain. D. Eshit. The correct answer is D. Eshit. Eshit is the process by which real property reverts to the government when there are no heirs or beneficiaries found during interstate succession. Question 69. What happens to real property when a person dies testate? A. It is sold and the proceeds are distributed among creditors. B. It is divided equally among surviving family members. C. It reverts to the government. D. It is transferred to the beneficiaries specified in the person's will. The correct answer is D. It is transferred to the beneficiaries specified in the person's will. When a person dies, testate, with a valid will, the real property is distributed to the beneficiaries as specified in the will according to the person's wishes. Question 70. Which of the following items is not considered personal property when bestowed in a will? A. Jewelry. B. Vehicles. C. Real estate. D. Cash. The correct answer is C. Real estate. Real estate refers to immovable property, such as land and buildings, and is not considered personal property. 
it is typically transferred through a devise in a will rather than being bestowed. Question 71. How can the title to an owner's real estate be transferred upon their death? A. Will. B. Trust. C. Quit claim deed. D. Interstate succession. The correct answer is A. Will. The title to real estate can be transferred upon the owner's death through a will where the owner specifies the beneficiaries who will receive the property. Question 72. What does the term escheat refer to in real estate? A. Transferring property through a trust. B. Transferring property through a quitclaim deed. C. Reversion of property to the government. D. Distribution of property to heirs. The correct answer is C. Reversion of property to the government. Escheat refers to the legal process where real estate property reverts to the government when no heirs or beneficiaries can be identified or located. Question 73. In the probate process of an estate, who is the last to receive payment, if any? A. Creditors. B. Executor. C. Beneficiaries. D. Attorney. The correct answer is C. Beneficiaries. After settling all outstanding debts and obligations, the beneficiaries of the estate are typically the last to receive payment from the remaining assets. Question 74. Which of the following words does not belong to the same group as the others? A. Warranty. B. Deed. C. Title. D. Insurance. The correct answer is D. Insurance. The terms warranty, deed, and title are all related to real estate transactions, whereas insurance is a term associated with risk coverage. Question 75. If a buyer defaults on a loan and the lender declares the note to become due and payable immediately, this would best be described as A. An momentum clause B. An exculpatory clause C. An acceleration clause D. An habendum clause the correct answer is C. An acceleration clause. This is a classic example of an acceleration clause. Question 76. Which of the following documents does not transfer an interest in real property? A. Warranty deed. B. Quit claim deed. C. Lease agreement. D. Mortgage. The correct answer is C. Lease agreement. While warranty deeds Quit claim deeds and mortgages can transfer an interest in real property. A lease agreement establishes a leasehold interest without transferring ownership of the property. Question 77. A man executed a will. However, the probate court declared it invalid due to not meeting state law requirements. Who will receive title to the man's real estate? A. The state government. B. The man's closest living relative. C. The person designated as the alternate beneficiary in the will. D. The state-appointed administrator of the estate. The correct answer is D. The state-appointed administrator of the estate. When a will is declared invalid, the probata court appoints an administrator to distribute the estate according to the state's laws of intestacy. Question 78. Who typically selects the executor of an estate? A. The deceased person in their will. B. The probate court judge. C. The attorney representing the estate. D. The beneficiaries of the estate. The correct answer is A. The deceased person in their will. The deceased person typically designates the executor in their will. The executor is responsible for managing the estate and ensuring its proper distribution. Question 79. A man died without a will and with no surviving relatives. What will happen to his four-acre farm? A. It will be sold and the proceeds will go to the state government. B. It will be transferred to the closest living relative. C. It will be auctioned off to settle outstanding debts. D. It will escheat to the state government as unclaimed property. The correct answer is D. 
it will escheat to the state government as unclaimed property. In the absence of a will and surviving relatives, the property will generally escheat to the state government as unclaimed property. Question 80. Under which condition would a property owner have riparian rights? A. When owning property adjacent to a river or a stream. B. When owning property with mineral rights. C. When owning property in a historic district. D. When owning property with an easement. The correct answer is A. When owning property adjacent to a river or a stream. Riparian rights pertain to the rights of a property owner who has land adjacent to a river or a stream, granting them certain water-related privileges and usage. Question 81. What happens to a person's real property when they die testate? A. It is transferred according to the person's will. B. It is sold and the proceeds are distributed to creditors. C. It reverts to the state government. D. It is divided equally among surviving family members. The correct answer is A. It is transferred according to the person's will. When a person dies testate, their real property is distributed according to their valid will, specifying who will inherit the property and how it will be transferred. Question 82. Which statement is not true about a party wall built on the property line between two lots? A. Each owner has an easement right to the wall. B. The wall is jointly owned by both property owners. C. Repairs and maintenance costs are shared by both owners. D. Either owner can modify or remove the wall without the other's permission. The correct answer is D. Either owner can modify or remove the wall without the other's permission. A party wall is typically subject to agreements and restrictions and modifications or removal usually require mutual consent and adherence to applicable regulations. Question 83. What is the primary purpose of the Uniform Commercial Code? A. Regulating real estate transactions. B. Governing criminal offenses. C. Standardizing commercial transactions and business practices. D. Establishing employment regulations. The correct answer is C. Standardizing commercial transactions and business practices. The Uniform Commercial Code, UCC, is a set of laws adopted by most U.S. states to provide consistency and uniformity in commercial transactions, such as sales, leases, and negotiable instruments. Question 84. Which option best describes the difference between an administrator and an executor? A. An administrator is appointed by the court, while an executor is named in the will. B. An administrator handles personal matters, while an executor deals with financial affairs. C. An administrator is responsible for interstate estates, while an executor manages testate estates. D. An administrator is an attorney, while an executor is a family member of the deceased. The correct answer is A. An administrator is appointed by the court, while an executor is named in the will. An administrator is appointed by the court to handle an estate when there is no valid will, while an executor is designated in a will to manage the estate's affairs. Question 85. A business owner discovered a location for a donut shop that had a drive through option and was situated on a highway just north of town, leading to a large employment city. What economic concept did the owner utilize in selecting this location for the donut shop? A. Supply and demand. B. Economies of scale. C. Market segmentation. D. Location advantage. The correct answer is D. Location advantage. The business owner utilized the concept of location advantage by strategically selecting a site with drive through and highway access to attract customers from the employment city. Question 86. In which of the following would you typically find the four unities of title, time, interest, and possession? A. Joint tenancy. B. Tenancy in common. C. Life estate. D. Leasehold estate. The correct answer is... A. Joint Tenancy. 
joint tenancy commonly exhibits the four unities of title, time, interest, and possession, indicating shared ownership with equal rights, simultaneous interest, and undivided possession. Question 87. In 1994, Fred constructed a building with six stories. Later, a zoning ordinance was enacted, prohibiting buildings six stories or taller in the area. This scenario exemplifies what? A. Non-conforming use. B. Variance. C. Spot zoning. D. Down zoning. The correct answer is D. Down zoning. The zoning ordinance that restricts buildings to a maximum of six stories represents down zoning, a change in zoning regulations that imposes more restrictive land use conditions. Question 88. A provision in a mortgage that allows the lender to demand repayment in full from you if you sell your mortgage property is called A. A. Liquidation Clause. B. Due on sale provision. C. Lender rebate provision. D. Transfer clause. The correct answer is B. Due on sale provision. If a mortgage has a provision that allows for a lender to demand repayment in full upon the sale of a mortgage property that serves as security for the mortgage, this is called a due on sale provision. Question 89. A table or chart that shows how much of each mortgage payment that is applied to interest and how much is applied to the principal is called A. An amortization schedule. B. A mortgage division chart. C. A loan expiration schedule. D. An interest to principal chart. The correct answer is A. An amortization schedule. An amortization schedule is a table or chart that shows how much of each mortgage payment that is applied to interest and how much is applied to the principal. Question 90. When a property adjoins a navigable waterway, which statement is true regarding riparian water rights? A. Riparian owners have exclusive rights to use the water. B. Riparian owners cannot use the water for any purpose. C. Riparian owners have equal rights to use the water. D. Riparian owners must seek permission for water usage from the government. The correct answer is C. Riparian owners have equal rights to use the water. Riparian owners, whose property borders a navigable waterway, generally have equal rights to reasonable use of the water, balancing the interests of all riparian owners. Question 91. When a buyer assumes the seller's tax escrow account held by the lender, what entry is made on the settlement statement at closing? A. Debit to the buyer and credit to the seller for the tax escrow amount. B. Debit to the buyer and credit to the lender for the tax escrow amount. C. Debit to the seller and credit to the buyer for the tax escrow amount. D. Debit to the lender and credit to the seller for the tax escrow amount. The correct answer is B. Debit to the buyer and credit to the lender for the tax escrow amount. When the buyer assumes the seller's tax escrow account, the buyer takes responsibility for the future payment of taxes. The entry reflects a debit to the buyer and a credit to the lender to adjust the settlement statement accordingly. Question 92. Tom, who owned a farm jointly with his son Jerry, had personal debts of over $50,000 and no assets except his share of the farm. Which statement is true? A. Tom's creditors can claim his share of the farm to settle his debts. B. Tom's share of the farm is protected from his personal debts. C. Tom's debts and assets have no impact on his joint ownership of the farm. D. Tom's son Jerry is responsible for paying off Tom's debts. The correct answer is A. Tom's creditors can claim his share of the farm to settle his debts. In joint tenancy, Tom's creditors can pursue his share of the farm to satisfy his debts, as it is considered an asset owned by him. His personal debts can encumber his ownership interest. Question 93. Jane purchased a house from John, but later discovered that John fraudulently misrepresented the electrical system's condition. Considering John's fraudulent actions, what is true about their contract? A. Jane can cancel the contract and seek legal remedies. 
B. Jane must accept the faulty electrical system as is. C. John is entitled to fix the electrical system at his expense. D. John is not liable for the misrepresentation. The correct answer is A. Jane can cancel the contract and seek legal remedies. John's fraudulent misrepresentation allows Jane to rescind the contract due to the deceptive nature of the transaction and pursue legal remedies for damages or cancellation. Question 94. In order for a deed to be valid, it must be A. Signed by the grantor B. Adequately describe the property C. In writing D. All of these The correct answer is D. All of these A valid deed must be in writing, it must be signed by the grantor, and it must adequately describe the property. Question 95. If you charter a corporation and acquire an apartment building, then sell stock to specific individuals who are granted a proprietary lease, enabling them to occupy different units. What type of ownership have you established? A. Cooperative ownership. B. Condominium ownership. C. Joint tenancy ownership. D. Corporate ownership. The correct answer is A. Cooperative ownership. By selling stock and granting proprietary leases, you have established a cooperative ownership structure where the stockholders have the right to occupy different units while collectively owning the corporation that owns the building. Question 96. Which of the following statements is true about a mortgage? A. It transfers ownership of the property to the lender. B. It is a type of insurance policy for real estate. C. It represents the borrower's promise to repay the loan. D. It is a legal document that outlines property boundaries. The correct answer is C. It represents the borrower's promise to repay the loan. A mortgage is a financial agreement where the borrower pledges their property as collateral and agrees to repay the loan amount, typically with interest, over a specified period. Question 97 A, B, and C are joint tenants of a property. After C's death, B sells their interest to D. Who currently owns the property? A, A, B, and D. B, A, B, and C. C, A, and D. D, B, and D. The correct answer is A, A, B, and D. In joint tenancy, when one tenant dies, the remaining tenants still own the property. Therefore, after C's death, A, B, and D are the current owners. Question 98. A buyer pays a $25,000 down payment and agrees to pay the remaining $150,000 at 12% interest over 10 years. The seller has a $100,000 first mortgage at 10% interest. What type of financing device is most likely involved if the seller provides a deed? A. Lease agreement. B. Land contract. C. Reverse mortgage. D. Wraparound mortgage. The correct answer is B. Land contract. In a land contract, the seller retains the deed until the buyer fulfills the payment terms. It allows the buyer to occupy the property while making installment payments, and the seller holds a mortgage interest. Question 99. For a $25,000 loan with a 30-year term and a 9% interest rate, if the monthly payments are $201.16, what would be the first month's interest payment? A. $56.25 B. $187.50 C. $187.75 D. $197.25 The correct answer is B. $187.50 The first month's interest payment is calculated by multiplying the loan balance $25,000 by the monthly interest rate, 9% divided by 12, equals $187.50. Question 100. If a grantor signs a deed on Saturday, but does not deliver it to the grantee until Sunday, which of the following statements is true? A. The deed is invalid because it was not delivered on the same day as the signing. B. The deed is valid since delivery can occur at any time after the signing. C. 
the grantor can revoke the deed at any point before delivery. D. The grantee has equitable title, but not legal title, until the deed is delivered. The correct answer is D. The grantee has equitable title, but not legal title, until the deed is delivered. Delivery of a deed is essential for the transfer of legal title. Until the grantee receives the delivered deed, they hold equitable title, which grants certain rights and interests, but not full legal ownership. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and subscribe for more practice tests.